coming out. This is, uh, my name is Eric Wright. I'm also known to most people as Disco Posse on Twitter, and I run a blog called DiscoPosse.com. And uh, what I want to talk to you here today on the V Brown Bag session was about uh, bridging the gap to private cloud. It's an interesting topic because yeah, as a, a cloud pundit and a cloud advocate, you know, the, one of the biggest areas that we run into is people that say, I can't run a cloud. And, and what we wanted to look at is, is the reasons why you can't. And, and getting to the point where you have the traditional virtualized data center and moving up into uh, private cloud implementations, and most importantly, why you need to go private cloud. Uh, quite often people say, well, I, I like the idea of cloud, but why would I go private cloud? Now, there's a lot of sort of fundamental problems with public clouds. Uh, I work in financial services as an example, so in financial services, healthcare, there's a lot of regulatory reasons why, why cloud isn't really going to work in the public side. Obviously, thanks to Edward Snowden and our fine friends at the NSA, everybody's a little bit wary about uh, putting uh, cloud products out there and putting our data out in the cloud. And cloud in itself is a funny thing, but ultimately, let's roll back to what cloud is to start with. Cloud isn't just about stuff that we do as far as technology, but it's more of a process. Now, this is normally where we would insert our slides. I don't have any slides today, so I'm going to have to wing it on this one. So I'm going to talk about three major points about what it is that drives our, our cloud infrastructure, and that's PPT. A lot of people have heard of this already. It's, it's around people, process, and technology. Now, we're here at VMware, uh, VMworld in San Francisco. Uh, we've got the technology part covered. You know, we've got a lot of great stuff in, in the vCloud space, uh, in the OpenStack side, if you're a fan of the Tuesday Night Brown Bag and, uh, and you're, you're delving into the OpenStack environment, or looking into any other sort of private cloud stuff or even public cloud content. But the other two things are the most important out of that, because it's not just the technology that drives it, it's, it's people and process. So the P and the P is what's going to change the way that you do things. So on the people side, we kind of think of them as the traditional, you know, there's two sides, there's your business users and, and then there's your actual IT folks, because that's where we have the, the old school Luddite mentality. And we've all got these, we've got guys that we grew up in rack and stack mentalities of you know, spinning up servers and it's all about bare metal and understanding that. And if you needed more servers, you bought more servers, you need more CPU, you need to add a server, but it was, you know, one app per server, two apps per server, virtualization changed that. We had a real big gain in what we could do there. But now when we look at the cloud, you know, the fundamentals of cloud is, is enabling the people and enabling the process. It's about taking automation, not just in the traditional way of, you know, I've written a script for something, but in fact, putting the script in the hands of the customer. You know, as a consumer of a service, that's really where the win is going to be. And ultimately, the big driver behind any kind of cloud infrastructure is, number one, it's got to be self-service. It's not just about being able to do it and, and phone a guy up and say, hey, I want to build a, I need a server A and I need server B, and then somebody goes and they fill in a ticket for it and, and then they provision it. It's the change in putting that into the customer's hands so they can control it themselves. So that's why we look at things like vCloud and vCake, Automation Center, and, and taking those things that we used to do for ourselves and now taking that one step further and moving it right up to the customer themselves and putting it you know, in that fancy web front end. Now, if we look at what's being done here, uh, VCHS, so the vCloud hybrid service, uh, I've been a, an early beta tester in this and a lot of the guys that are, are here uh, have obviously been involved in that. And in fact, today was a big launch for anybody who saw the news. Uh, that was a big part of their lore launch information is that it is fully general available. And in fact, they've just spun up two new physical data centers. So let's take a look at that service. It's the idea of, you know, I can go through a web console. In fact, I can even stretch it out and I can move it up to you know, my own vCloud director and I can move my private cloud into their space and, and treat it like a private cloud on someone else's land. But let's take that and, and bring it back even further is, why don't we do what they did inside? Now, we'd all like to think that you know, we have a Nick Weaver uh, or these kind of great guys that can go out and do these amazing things with Puppet and, and uh, you know, Chef and, and, and build these great automation tools, but you know, we've got to start small. So the, the first thing that we need to do is reevaluate what we're doing in IT. So in IT, we want to say, and what can I do to make my own job better? And how can I automate in my provisioning process? So 
take your guys that are in your traditional IT and that old rack and stack mentality and bring them out and, and give them exposure to tools that's going to open up their minds and their ability to do things. You know, obviously, Puppet is a really great tool. Uh, Chef, you know, Razor for rail, railing back down to bare metal deployments. You know, all these tools, you know, most likely are freely available. vCenter Orchestrator. Uh, I like free. You know, free is my favorite cost. It's easy to sell to your management team that I don't need to go out and, and write invoices for this stuff and, and keep rolling over 20% year over year costs on it. The cost and these are the intangible costs of actually building this process. So now what you're going to do is you're going to take your admin guys and you're going to enable them to do something special that they can do for themselves. And again, we talk about the, the people side of it and the people side is on the admin side. And we've got a lot of folks that are, it's a natural thing we do. We fear change. There's a reason there's a book called Who Moved My Cheese and it's a number one bestseller because we don't like change. So as we're moving to this generation and looking at cloud infrastructure, that's why private cloud is a really great place to land. Because with private cloud, it allows you to get all of the gains and the process and the efficiencies of cloud infrastructure, but you don't have to add the, the risk that where you're moving it out onto off-premises, out into open space. Uh, we could have an entire presentation truthfully about that, and, and I know that's also a big argument on the people side as well. Generally, when people talk about cloud, the first thing they say is, oh, why would you go private cloud? What's the point of it? You know, but again, it's, it's about changing the way that we do things. So obviously, you know, talking about what we're here, if you haven't seen what these things are all about, uh, V Brown Bag is probably one of the biggest tools that's helped in my toolkit, uh, and because I can dig into the toolkits of other guys. So you know, we've got an amazing team of people that contribute to this all the time. And that is free. You know, so even outside of that, let's take that as our fundamental. You know, get involved in that and understand what you can do. And you have access to great guys in the industry that do this every day. So that is you know, your first step. You have to sort of excite yourself about wanting to do it. And clearly, I mean, if you're watching this and you're at these kind of events, we're evolving. You know, we are no longer the traditional rack and stack. So now on the business side, let's see what we can do on the people side there. Now again, I work in a particular industry and a particular organization that we don't really consume services in a way that's conducive to cloud. And that's as important as anything. We don't do cloud just to do cloud. It's no different than I say, I, I want everybody to own an iPhone because I like iPhones. I, I can't sell that as a business concept. So what you've got to do is the same thing. You've got to go out and you've got to engage your business stakeholders and say, you know, how do you want to consume services of IT? and it's got to map against their business model. You know, number one thing I would tell you to do is I would reach out to uh, George Spafford, Jez Humble, the great guys that are in DevOps, and, uh, and Gene Kim, read the Phoenix Project. Uh, that is probably the number one thing I can recommend as an IT person, as a business person, everywhere from CIO down to sysadmin. This is a very important book because it talks about you know, the DevOps mentality, the DevOps methods, and again, it's, it's tapping into that business and getting your business to consume that product in a way that you can now deliver the product so that's easier to be consumed. It's really gotta be a two-way structure. If somebody just comes by and they, they cook you lasagna every day but you don't eat lasagna, that doesn't do any good. And that's effectively what a lot of cloud implementations fail on, is that we go and we're excited about the technology and we're like, oh look, look at this amazing thing we can do and, I, and I've, I've built this amazing cloud and look what I can do and then you never let your business user use it that way. Or perhaps they don't need to use it that way, they still need to use it a different way. So as a consultant, as an insourcer, as anybody, you've got to be aware of your business user. If you don't understand your client, then ultimately you failed right out of the gate. So the biggest thing you're going to do, number one, is engage your user, and it's all about the full end-to-end -end process. And it can be a long process, I'm not going to sit here and blow sunshine up your backside and tell you that it's just going to be one meeting and all of a sudden you, you've got a cloud deployment or you've got a full understanding of your business. But that business analysis, engaging your users, engaging your IT people, engaging your development team, probably one of the biggest gains you're going to find, even if you can't get it right down to the business infrastructure, is get your, your development teams involved. You know, environments being able to be spun up in a cloud methodology 
it's going to hugely enable your development teams to be able to do things easier. So they can say, hey, I need a, a, an instance of my environment, or I need a bare bones instance, I need a, a mid-grade instance, I need whatever I need. Very simple, you build your service catalog and that service catalog ultimately is going to give them what they need. So not only is your business case your business user, but even if you look at just on the pure IT side, your developers will be great customers to be able to consume that service. But again, it's understanding their business case, their use case, and what they need to consume in order to make this a workable tool. So if you look at you know, products that we've got in the vCloud environment, obviously it's a big thing. You know, vCloud 5.5 is, is on the cusp. You know, we, we've got this available to us now, and there's going to be a, some new ways to do things and some product enhancements. But ultimately, again, it's going to be around methodologies. So as you take those methodologies and you say, okay, how am I going to do this where I can take this process and I can make it so that it's automated, orchestrated, and then present it as a service catalog. It's going back to paper, not necessarily full out building a book, because that's where it started. You know, that's how these build documents went. It was, I'm gonna go through the run book and say, oh, I, I'm on page 17 right now and, and the screen's different. I've gotta rewrite my run book. And people fear this and they say, well, I don't wanna build all these automation scripts and these orchestration scripts because what happens when my new server is a different processor? My new server has different storage. How, why would I wanna go in and change my scripts every day? Well, that's the amazing thing. You're already doing that. So let's take that effort, eat that effort now, and then you're gonna take that and then it'll turn it into benefit in the long term. You know, if you, if you watch a lot of the V Brown Bag stuff that's being done, <coughs> on vCake, the, the, the vCenter Automation Center, and a lot of the great stuff that's being done there. That's the real next layer, and then you get chargeback, and you've really got the big win. Because then you can now, not necessarily monetize that information, or monetize that hardware and that software and that, that consumption of service, at least you can do showback and you can explain where the benefit's coming from and how you're using the service. Because if you can go back to your direct directors and your management team and say, well, you know, we used X amount of resources for X amount of period, and this is what we believe it costs, even if it's not a direct accurate cost, at least it's relative to what you had the week before or the month before. Again, you know, that's a business case thing that, that's a very easy way to sell it. Also, you know, we look at the business case, which is classic. <coughs> Sorry, no, cough. There's no cough button on this thing. I'm a bad presenter. <laughs> Uh, so if we look at the idea of cloud is about being elastic. And this is one of the great arguments that people always make is private cloud doesn't really sell correctly as cloud because it's not truly elastic. It is elastic, but it's not infinite. Truthfully, public cloud isn't infinite either. At some point you're gonna hit a, an endpoint, but most likely if you're using AWS, uh, they're gonna take care of that for you. So what you wanna look at is the elastic capability of it. and. So let's say I use X amount of data per month, per day, per whatever period of time you want to measure it. Understanding that use case where it's elastic and where it's growing is great. If you actually reduce the service, that's where the real win comes in. And again, your development teams to say, I need 12 environments. Okay, good. Next week, let's get rid of four of them because they don't need it anymore. That's another big win that you're going to find in, in doing that automation and then better use of your resources all around. I'm assuming that someone's gonna tell me why 15 minutes are up. <laughs> so, if you think about what your use is right now, go back and take a look. Now, on a hypervisor side, it doesn't matter what you do. If you wanna take KBM and you wanna layer OpenStack over top of it, if you wanna put whatever management tool it is over top of that, if you want to go out and extend into a hybrid situation like with a VCHS, ultimately, as I said, technology is not going to be where the win is. You've got to engage your business user, engage your consumer of that service, and then you're going to take that information and then you build that case. So this run book that you build, now you hand it off to somebody. Even better, you hand it off to your system. And you just revisit that monthly, quarterly, <clears throat> annually, you know, there's, there's certain portions that aren't going to change. And then often the big thing we have as sysadmins is we say, 
I'm not a coder. No, I'm not a coder. I can say this proudly. I can't code my way out of a paper bag. I do a lot of coding for a guy that's not a coder. So truthfully, it's not about coding, but it's about maybe being a developer. So you really need to know just enough development. Big tools that you're going to want to learn, Python, Ruby, PowerShell, VB script, it's still there on the Windows side. If you're into Hyper-V, we haven't talked about Hyper-V, but it's because they don't really want to talk about Hyper-V when this is behind us here. So think about those small things that you can do. So Ruby, you know, go to, there's a lot of just enough Ruby courses that are out there. Reach out to the community. We're a very open community. Python, if you're on the OpenStack side, Python is a way of life. Again, Python in itself and the way that we use it for small scripting and automation, it's not that difficult to learn. When you're looking at stuff that you do with Puppet, <coughs> it's all Ruby based, very great tool, very minimal amount of work that you've got to do on your side because there's a huge community behind it. So that community is going to be what you can lean on. You've effectively grown your IT organization by thousands of people. So now if I've got a problem where I want to be able to deploy a particular product into a particular environment, then all I do is I can go out to the forums, I can reach out to guys in the B brown bag, I can go up and I can get blogs and I can say, you know, this is my particular problem, what can I do? They've got strong support that's building. You know, vCenter Orchestrator, literally hundreds of bloggers are building scripts, processes in order to enable you to use vCenter Orchestrator. There's a reason why they made it free, because they want you to enable that next point where you take that traditional vSphere hypervisor, use VCO, build those orchestration processes in, and then it's a natural, organic next step for you to simply put vCloud Director in front of it. And we kind of overuse the SDDC and the abstraction layers, but really that's what it is. You know, take that next abstraction layer and no one really has to understand what it is that put that in between there. You don't have to maintain that. And now, again, those very small changes you do in those scripts and processes continually reused. And there's an amazing amount of people that are involved in, in this. <laughs> Hi there. <laughs> this is what happens when you do a live broadcast from a place that has a lot of staff that don't realize you're doing a live broadcast. So. Oh, look at that. Sorry, I apologize. I didn't realize I went over. We've got nobody that's coming next to us. So let me close out. My timer shut off, so I'm going to blame it on that. So now's the point where I say, don't just buy one, buy two. We'll send it to you with no shipping and handling. Uh, so anyways, thank you very much. Uh, I hope this is somewhat meaningful. Reach out to me. I'm Disco Posse on Twitter, discoposse.com. Thank you to John Harris for running the board, and, and thank you to my, my audience here for, uh, for not heckling me too bad, and, uh, and we'll see you guys out on the floor. <laughs> Thank you, Eric.